Okay, we're continuing our presentation on algorithms in computer science, and we're about to get to some core CS algorithms, but before we do, I want to show you flowcharts. We've been talking about um, different types of ways of writing uh, algorithms, and here's an example of a flowchart. Now, I had to break it into two sides here, uh, and, and you just see an example here. So the idea of a flowchart, it's used to illustrate control flow. That's why they call it flowchart. So what is control flow? Basically, it's the way, uh, the way in which your code gets run or executed. Okay, now in a previous um, tutorial, I was talking about uh, doing recursion, and we put a breakpoint in a program, and we were running through it. And as we were running through the breakpoint, you could see it would highlight each line of code as it was executing. Well, a flowchart is just a visual way of showing this. And as you recall, in recursion, we kept going back to and repeating some of the same lines. So this will use arrows to show that. So let's talk about some of the symbols, and I'm going to give you the, the, most, um, the most common symbols first, and I'll show you some others. Uh, first of all, if you're going to do input and output, we use a parallelogram, okay? So like for the example of get username, okay, you would write get for input. I've seen other ones where there's an arrow pointing from the left-hand side pointing to it, and it's separate from all other arrows, and it's just, that's a, another visual of showing that it is um, input, okay? And so I can put my own little arrow here with the pen. There you go. So that would be input. Now, if you're going to do uh, output, you can do put or print, okay? In this case, you would do a little line like that, okay? So, and you don't have to. That's just optional, but some people will do that, saying, you know, one is coming in, the other is going out, okay? Um, now, whenever you process data, and you could use this for initializing and setting a variable, but you can also use it for math computation, you would use uh, just a rectangle, okay? And then I like to just put it as a formula or just an assignment statement, depending on how you do it, okay? Uh, when you come to a decision, you use a diamond, or as I like to call it, a rhombus, because rhombus just sounds more fun, all right? So anytime there's a decision statement to be made, like is count greater than zero, that may have a true, may have a false, that's how you would do it. You use the rhombus. Okay, so we use that diamond. For, we can use it for while loops, and we can use it for conditional execution because, as you may recall, in a while loop, it's based on a condition anyway. So conditions or decisions are done in rhombuses or diamonds. Okay? Uh, some people also call that selection as well. Okay. You would write it as a true-false question, and then you would typically have a T and an F coming out. Um, I've seen it where they don't use the true and false, in which case actually standard. I've seen it probably more often than not that true's a lot of times on the left and false is on the right. I say put the T and the F in there or a Y or an N for yes or no. Put it in there. But don't make someone guess. Okay? Um, and you'll notice that two arrows come out, and that's because there is either a yes or a no answer to it, so there's always going to be two arrows coming out. Okay? And then, like I said, we label them. And then a lot of times you'll have a terminal statement, and that could be in the form of a circle or in like an ellipsoid kind of thing, oval shape, whatever you want to call it. Um, there you go. So those are some, and let's show you another um, example of some other flowchart shapes. Okay, so this comes from a, an article called Standard Flowchart Symbols and Their Usage. So you will notice other things like a document. So if you're going to read from a document or write to a document, you might see that. Um, notice that they use the parallelogram for data, uh, stored data like in a database or something, um, etc. So there's a lot of different other shapes that you will see. Okay, so if you want to go to that, that website, um, it's from edrawsoft.com. And if you go there, it actually will show you a lot of standard uh, algorithms using flowchart. Uh, okay, so let's talk about branching or selection statements, also known as conditional execution. If you were to just do an if structure, remember you just have an if keyword and then there's code after it. You would just put, and this is just the example, you know, is a condition true? If it is, we run a block of code. If not, we just go to the next statement. 
There is no else involved in this structure, okay? So if it's false, it just skips the block and moves on. An if else if structure, or I'm sorry, an if else structure, excuse me, will have two, we have one decision, a true and a false, each one going to one or more blocks of execution, okay? And then they both converge in the control flow and go to the next statement. The next statement would be outside of that if else structure, okay? So the statement on the left typically will represent the block under the if statement. Notice there is a T because when it evaluates to true, we run whatever's in the block of code after the if. However, because there's a block that gets run after the false, that is the else, okay? So the if is on the left, and then the else is on the right. And don't you love my mouse, my mouse writing? We'll call that mouse writing. It kind of looks like a mouse did it with a little pencil or something. All right, mm -hmm. anyways, as I said, right, statement on the right is the else statement. Okay, let's take a look at a more complicated one as soon as I delete everything on this slide. Um, let's look at an if, else, if, else structure where we have here. Now, in this case, what we just do is we just keep chaining our decisions or our operators, right? Or our comparisons, excuse me. So this first one on the true represents the if, okay? And then under that, the next block is going to be an else if statement. Okay, sorry, that's my mouse writing for else if. And then it, so you'd put if whatever condition, and then we have a block of code. Then we have an else if, and then we run a condition. And then if that runs true, we do that. If it's false, we go down to the next else if, okay, which would be on the left. And then um, finally on the right, we have the else, okay. So we have a lot of different possible outcomes, okay? Notice the way the arrows work. There's only one arrow at a time. You would come in here, we would check. If the answer was true, we would go here, and then we would finish down here, right? Now, if that wasn't true, but the next one was, we would maybe go here, drop down here, and then we might go over here, and down to there. So that's another code path we could use, um, or we could end up going over here. So you see that there's only one possible path you're gonna run through. And in this particular flowchart, one thing for you to think about is there are, no matter how the outcome of this program runs, in this case, you're going to have only two lines of execution, which is um, whatever goes under the T, either here, 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 or what goes under the else over there, okay? But no matter what, you're gonna go one of these routes and only one route. And then we would have one more line of execution there. This represents, no matter what path it takes, two executions only, right? Because you, can, you can't, when you follow that arrow, it's only gonna take you to a decision, a block, and one more block, no matter what you do, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so flowcharts. Um, what I don't want you doing in a flowchart is having arrows go all over the place and then ending and then, you know, it, it, you should be able to follow it. It should be clear as long as you're chaining it right. Okay. And again, that last rhombus, the far right, this right here is our else. 